Yeah, so thank you, Nola. Thank you to the Comm School for inviting us out <clears throat> to speak with you all. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys, as you were on you know, your journey to wherever it is that you are today, had several points where you were checking in, is this the right career for me? Is this my passion? How can I build a life that I want to live using entrepreneurship or business or some combination of those facets? So these were all questions that we were interested in answering for ourselves, and that's what led us to start the Learning Out Loud podcast. So I'm Chapin. I'm Justin. And I'm Marley. So the three of us were actually all from the same town on Long Island, New York, but we actually didn't all meet each other in high school. We all met at UVA. Chapin and I were both third years, and we did know each other in high school. We were good friends, but Justin's actually a fourth year, and he transferred here last year, where we coincidentally met in the gym last year. It looked like a familiar face. Um, after talking for a while and realizing we had some things in common, I introduced <coughs> the two of them on a hike, and on this hike, we were talking a lot about the books that we're reading, the podcasts that we're listening to, and kind of one of the main insights here was that we realized we all have this desire to learn from other out outside resources outside the classroom. So kind of just like a deep curiosity for learning. The second part of this was that we were all really passionate about entrepreneurship. Um, we wanted to start something. We talked about some ideas. We thought we could be good partners. We didn't land on anything specifically. We didn't know exactly where we wanted to start or how to go about it. Right, so as Justin said, <clears throat> we kind of had two main ideas when starting the podcast. We first wanted to know if the three of us could be good business partners, and the second aspect is that we figured that the best way to get exposure to as many industries as possible would be to speak to as many people as we can who are either doing or have done what we're trying to do. So that's what jumped us into the episodes. And um, we had a couple different themes in mind that we wanted to explore through the episodes. Um, one of which is combining kind of the hard skills that we build in the classroom through math and science and accounting and finance with some of the softer skills that we feel are necessary to succeed in the business world and in life through networking and managing people and leadership. So we kind of think that the, the rocket is what we build at school and then we have to pour the jet fuel of those soft skills in there to get us wherever it is that we want to go. And the second aspect that we wanted to talk about is I think oftentimes we focus on all the different ways that we could have gotten to where we are today through things that we think should have went well and didn't or the opposite. But obviously that same thing is mirrored on the flip side. So wherever it is that you are today, there are infinite paths to get wherever it is that you want to go in the future. And we're not trying to map that out exactly, but what we are trying to do is kind of have this true north direction of where it is that we want to go and then be directionally correct in whatever steps that we're taking to get there. All right, so since the end of May, we've recorded about 34 episodes and we've released 23 actually today. Um, and we're booked through the rest of the semester. So we've talked to a lot of different people, a lot of CEOs, founders, press professors that we've had in a lot of different industries that we probably wouldn't have spoken with without doing this. So a lot of venture capital, construction, shipping, marketing, quantitative finance, AI, a lot more. All right, so here's what we've learned so far. Um, the first lesson is that to find your purpose, you have to look between your passion and your pain. Um, when we're speaking with a lot of the founders, we had Alex Russell on, really passionate about kava. And he basically found this pain within it is that you know, there's not a proper way to import kava into the United States. For Meg Pride, it was beauty products. She felt they were way too expensive. She wanted a lower cost option. For Chat, who we have here today, is passionate about helping people, and I was able to find some pain within the healthcare industry and go about solving that problem. So when we're thinking, how can we apply this right now? You know, maybe instead of looking at the job, the career, the industry, first look, do a little bit of self-reflection, find that passion, and then you know, find that problem you want to solve, then figure out like what company, what people do I need to put myself around to go about you know, pursuing this solution. Yeah, so another one of the main themes and lessons that we learned from some of the guests is that you have to learn by doing. And the perfect example of this is we had uh, Alex Brenzen, who's the COO of Thompson Hospitality. So that picture we had earlier of us at the restaurant, that's the Ridley in Charlottesville. They own that, they own Ralph Sampson's American Tap Room, a bunch of others across the Eastern Seaboard. And he was telling us how basically he came over from Europe without anything larger than an undergraduate degree. So he didn't have an MBA, he didn't have any grad school besides that, but he was able to delve deep into the topics they needed to learn in finance and in managing people. And through that experience, was able to rise up the ranks and manage a bunch of people in some really important topics in the industry. Uh, so the best way is to go from philosophizing about the entrepreneurship journey into actually being in the arena and doing it for ourselves. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later.
Right, so another big thing is really learning to accept the randomness of life. I think that it's super easy as a college student and at UVA especially to really want to plan five years into the future. And while it's really good to have these long-term goals and expectation, expectations for yourself, it's not really realistic because we've kind of learned through the podcast that you never know what opportunities are coming your way and the connections that you're going to make, who you're going to meet. I think a really good example of this was with Brennan Richardson. He used to teach here and he also went here and now he's starting an AI satellite company. So he was telling us that a few years after school, he didn't really know what he was doing with his life. He was working at a gym, handing out towels actually. And a VC guy came into the gym, they started having a conversation and it came up that Brennan was in McIntyre and the VC was like, what are you doing handing me out towels? Like, do you wanna come work for me? And this complete chance encounter ended up changing the rest of Brendan's career. And I think that that really highlights this. Another example, Rich Deemer, who we have today, he told us on the podcast that uh, he actually won the lottery. And that's what got him to come to UVA. And obviously, that changed the rest of his life. So, so we've spoken with a lot of the guests about networking. And I think the people that do it really, really well, they focus on building long-term personal relationships with people, um, building this strong foundation brick by brick. I think. Sometimes the way we were taught networking is maybe it's a little surface level, a little transactional, kind of in the short term, who can I talk to for this position? Um, which might work in the short term, but you know, long term, similar to a house of cards, it's not really gonna last. Um, I think you know, now we're thinking, try to find the most interesting people you can, people you genuinely wanna talk to. They'll feel this authenticity, and ultimately it changes the dynamic of the relationship. And one quick other thing to this is that you know, if you want to talk with interesting people, make yourself interesting as well. You know, start something you're passionate about because it comes, it comes across the right way to people. Yeah, so another one of the major lessons that we took, and this is also from a conversation we had with Brendan Richardson, is that you want to have high participation but low attachment to outcome. And what we mean by that is there's a delineation between what you can and can't control. So the things that you can, those you should be putting your full effort and focus into and driving that as far as you can, but to get that last mile, there's these other things that the randomness and luck that Marley referred to, that those are out of your control, so you shouldn't be as concerned about those things. So just in the same way, you know, you can bring a ship out uh, to go fishing at the right time of year, in the right location, with the right bait, but the fish still have to bite for you to actually go home with anything to eat at the end of the day. All right, so another thing is that we have to be intentionally curious with ourselves and also our external environment. We keep digging and asking ourselves, why do I actually like what I'm doing? Why do I not like what I'm doing? So an example of this was with Alex Aretta. He's taught entrepreneurship classes here in the past. He also went here. Um, right after graduating, he was part of starting a few companies and he was enjoying it, but he actually realized that he wasn't enjoying it because he was starting companies. He realized that he actually just liked helping other people through this process and that wasn't just a magic discovery. He realized that through asking himself, why do I like this? And through that process, he has now been able to develop this system to figure out who the high level entrepreneurs are. And it was all starting with being curious with himself. So through internally reflecting together, we've kind of realized that there's actually a larger problem here. It's not just us figuring out, okay, what's the business that we want to start? It's actually just how do we craft the life that we want to live? And that just doesn't relate to just us, it's college students in general. And we've realized that entrepreneurs are actually just really good examples of people who have accomplished this, living life the way that they want to do it. Right, so as Marley was saying, we thought this was a larger problem, and so we started to look back at kind of the path that we took to get where we are. And so thinking about you know middle school to high school, for example, that's a very well-trodden path. You kind of have someone that's leading you along that journey. It's not you know the craziest shift going from sixth grade to ninth grade. But once you go from high school to college, it gets a little bit more complex. But still, you have a very good support group with you in terms of guidance counselors and teachers and parents that are leading you along that path. Going from college to the real world, though, that's a little bit more of a big jump. Um, it's more on you. It's very independent. You have to be introspective. And so that's kind of the gap that we're hoping that we can bridge a little bit for people and ourselves especially, right? So we want to have these conversations, publicize them, and hopefully come up with some connections between all these themes and lessons that we learned that can help people make better decisions for themselves. So what we're doing now is basically creating a system out of all of this, taking the habits, the values, the lessons we've learned, finding the commonalities between all the guests, 
um, distilling them down into actionable steps that we can take right now. And I think when we've reflected on this right now in the present, one of those first steps, which Chapin mentioned earlier, is to start learning by doing. We set out to do all this because we wanted to be entrepreneurs, so I think it's time that you know we start running a business and get into that. Uh, we might not get it right the first time, and it's surely going to be a winding path like all of your journeys to success. But you know that very aspect of learning by doing is what makes it so powerful in, in figuring it out in the end. Right, so to that point, we'd love to talk with all of you either on the podcast or just have a conversation offline. We don't have to post it. Um, I mean, the console has been very gracious that we can record in the studio, down the hall as well. That's what we've been doing. Um, <clears throat> but so those two lessons, those two business ideas that Justin was talking about. So one of them we're thinking about is uh, we're all passionate about data and helping businesses you know, learn more about businesses, how they make their decisions, improving that process. So we're thinking about doing a data analytics consultancy. And we're also thinking about finding a way to connect <clears throat> entrepreneurs who have started a business at UVA or other colleges who have a startup and connecting those with students who are interested in getting into that space. And that was actually a lesson that we took from our conversation with Mark Allen. So that was the 23rd episode that we posted this morning. Mark Allen, obviously, you know, the namesake for the Center of Entrepreneurship at the Comm School. So if you scan this one on the left, that will bring you to the podcast on Spotify. Check out all the episodes. And the next one is the website. So we have on there all the episodes, some more details about us. We also have some blog posts from the episodes that we'll continuously be posting over the next few weeks. So with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions or hear any stories that maybe resonated with some of the lessons that we talked about today um, about you know podcast business. I don't think it's yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not working. Just just yes. Okay. So we'll figure out another way. Then. Then. Yeah, that's yeah, the way to my right? yeah. Can you remind us um, each of your years and what you're studying? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So I'm a, I'm a third, I'm Marley again, I'm a third year, I'm in McIntyre. Yeah, I'm Chapin, uh, I'm a third year in the College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm doing an inter interdisciplinary major, so I'm doing staffs, neuroscience, and an entrepreneurship minor. Uh, in the college. And I'm Justin, I'm a fourth year studying applied statistics. And the questions too, feel free about student experience, they're yeah. willing to answer questions. Yeah, anything <laughs> We have thought about it like that, yeah. honestly, in a way. Um, I mean, it's making a little money, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like three dollars. So yeah. look into it for a second. How do you find how it's monetized? Is it based? You don't have ads, do you? Oh, you do. We, yeah, you have Spotify. Some sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Spotify ads, and then a couple of people have like sponsored the episode, so that's been. Yeah. You spot like what type of companies are sponsored? Like people who come on the podcast, they'll sponsor. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So. Maybe, yeah, a little bit. Um, we, lower, yeah. yeah, and we're kind of, like, when we first started this, we kind of were thinking of it almost as, like, a practice round for the real thing, because it's not as, like, there's nothing that's risky about this, so. Two questions. Is there a um, wish list guest that you guys would want to have that we could perhaps help you secure? And two, what is the unique superpower that each of you bring to your work together? So for the, the guests, as long as you guys agree, it's Alex or Mosey. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him, but uh, wow. you know, so uh, his his advice is just really, really actionable. Like you watch it, and he's all about changing behavior. He says you're not learning if you don't change anything that you're actually well, doing. Who he is. Oh, sorry. So he's uh, <laughs> he's the founder of this company called Gym Launch. They're um, consulting for gyms. He started out running his own gyms. He actually started out consulting before that. Didn't enjoy it so much. Went out and you know packed all his stuff. Went to California and just. Uh, became a personal trainer and he built his way up running a few different gyms. Found out he was really good at getting the clients in the first time. And so, so some mentors of his basically told him, well, why don't you just only focus on that because that's your real skill. So he did that for a really long time, sold that company for, I'm not sure. A lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. And now he kind of um, tries to, he runs a venture capital firm and he gives back and gives his um, business advice to everybody for free essentially. So. So. Have you tried to reach out to him in the past? Like, should we try to help him out? Yeah, we're, we're kind of waiting for the uh, the right moment to reach out because we think it's kind of a one and done type thing. Uh, with He's him. the type of person. Yeah. yeah. What, what's his name? Alex, Alex Ramosi. He's kind of taking over the internet with, with this business yeah. advice. Yeah. So, if we can figure out how to get to him, we should go through you. Like, we should help. Like, we shouldn't attempt on our own. 
I mean, if you if you can get oh, okay. them, then yeah. He's, he's spoken at like UT Austin okay. and okay. done an entrepreneurship class, but okay. you get him at UVA. Get him to come here, challenge. speak, speak, and then do a podcast yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right and then like the superpower part, I don't want to forget about that. Oh. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about Justin and Marley. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Justin, like, so Justin, what he admires in Alex Ramos is that he brings it down, like, you know, to, to the real world, what you can actually do. He definitely is that, like, grounding presence for us in terms of, like, what can we do today that actually makes a difference? Um, so that, I think, it's been, like, essential in actually, like, pushing forward the podcast. And Marley's been really great about reaching out to people, making those connections, like, I think she's also really driving the other aspect of that, which is like, how can we get this to something that's really big in the future? Um, so I think you know, two sides of that kind of spectrum really helps to to balance out what we're doing on a day to day, week to week, month to month. So I'll say, some similar for the both of you guys is that when I transferred here, working with them, just the speed they get things done, they, there's no BS. It's like, should we do this? Yes, it's done right away. Mm-hmm. And I think just seeing that, how much faster you can make progress in the long term by doing that, um, and it inspires me. It pushes me to to see how fast and quick and how much smarter I can get, basically. Um, Chapin, I mean, we've known each other for like years at this point now, and I, I always say like he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And like during the podcast episodes, it's kind of just crazy like seeing the questions that he comes up with so fast. And I, it's in real life too. I mean, I guess that is real life, but like he just comes up with these analogies so fast, and it's always just the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like he, I, I don't know. It's just like abstract thinking kind of um, that I'm not able to do at all, and it's crazy to me. Um, Justin, similar to what Chapin was saying, just like really gets to the point, and also um, he kind of has like self-proclaimed that his role is marketing and understanding people, and I, I think that he's definitely falling into that role a lot. So. Needs some work. Any other questions from anyone? So you transferred here and that kind of brought you guys together. Yes. And you may be the first one to kind of transfer out. So how will you guys, <laughs> if I'm correct, but how will you guys navigate that change? What do you think that will, will do to you guys as a... I mean, he's always got my couch to sleep on, come back and visit each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do you have plans for next year? I have, so I worked at a, like a mortgage lending company this past summer. I, I got the licenses, so I have that, but oh. just as an option, but I'm still uh, still thinking it out. I don't, I don't have it all figured out. You don't out. have to. Mm-hmm. I was talking. Short we, answer is we we'll, we'll continue. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you like agriculture? It's a good supplement to everything else that I'm doing, and those are my favorite classes, the ones with you know, Chip Rennes or Eric Martin. Yeah. Like those, those are really exciting. They feel more applicable to the real world like once I get out of school, so I like that a lot. Yeah. Anything else for these? I just have one this sort of yeah. weird question, but so you talked a little bit about you know you want to design the life that you want, and I don't think anyone in this room would do anything but nod to that, right? Because we all are in search of that for our whole careers. Some of us that have more scar tissue than you do <laughs> would say, I think, that some of the most beneficial and most high impact experiences we had were what gave us the scar tissue, right? They were maybe sometimes even traumatic setbacks or whatever. So when you think about that, for example, entrepreneurialism, right, one of the things I associate with it is incredibly hard work. I mean, like 
no nine to five stuff. This is like your life, right? And so how do you balance that when you think about this endeavor going forward and being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, I think you're, it's no nine to five because it's hard to balance um, like the work from your life because you enjoy it so much. Right. So to me, that's crafting the life that I want because I'm actually doing it because I want to. Whereas if it's just like I'm working a nine to five, it's not really something I'm enjoying. That's not crafting the life I want. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great point. I mean, I don't know if you guys went to the, uh, the AI talk earlier, um, but basically what he was talking about is he was from OpenAI, you know, he brought everything um, to market, and basically the idea was that some of the like drudgery of computational stuff at least is gonna be replaced, so you have to find that you're not identifying with your work so much because that could be replaced, right? I think the idea is we can find a passion or a project that doesn't feel like work and that we can associate ourselves with because we're building that up with each other. And something that Alex Ramosi, you know, um, says is basically that you are the product of that work, so whatever you're doing, even if it fails, even if it's not exactly what you want, you as a person, in terms of what you're accumulating from that scar tissue, is the product. So I think that's kind of the mindset we want to go about you know, looking at things with, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I just want to say, first, thank you for coming and sharing. This was outstanding, thank so much fun for us to learn and hear about. Uh, and the second, uh, there's a fabulous podcast called The Knowledge Project, um, which is very much aligned with what you guys are doing all around mental models and challenging different ways of thinking. And so he just crystallized all that into a book and you know, became a New York Times bestseller instantly. Um, so it's, it's really, I mean, it's outstanding what you guys are doing, but that might be something just yeah, to Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank, yeah, you. thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Thank you.